So I'm sitting in my sauna here at my house. It's um, 110 degrees. I am definitely overdressed to be in the sauna, but I just wanted to talk to you about the history and traditions of sauna here in the UP. And for that, I went to visit with Jim Curdy. The word sauna is the only Finnish word that is considered uh, to be adopted into the English language. That's why it's important that that one word should also be pronounced correctly. <laughs> there is a philanthropic organization called Finlandia Foundation and they have declared at the end of February to be National Sauna Week and they're encouraging everyone to celebrate sauna, to appreciate it, to become more acquainted with it, to be more appreciative of all the the complexities of sauna. In rural Finland, you know, they, they didn't have a lot of uh, resources and so everything they, they had, they had to make themselves. And so when it came to bathing, they had this very ancient tradition of, of having these steam houses, these saunas. And uh, it was important at many levels because it was a place to bathe, but it was also kind of a place to relax. And it was really also a, a sense of community. So you kind of shared that sauna with everyone that was there. There used to be a saying that uh, if sauna, tar, and whiskey don't cure you, then you're a goner. And so sauna was really, uh, they also used to say sauna on köhän miehen aptikki, that the sauna is the poor man's apothecary. And it's very good for you to relax you, to cleanse you, to detox you, which, was, which is something people talk about a lot these days. It was always a clean place. That's where the women would go to have their babies. It was quiet, it was clean. Finnish immigrants brought the sauna to the UP in the 1860s when they came to work in the copper mines. And when they built their homes, the sauna was the first building they built. The upper Midwest has also been coined as the sauna belt. Some say that the copper country is the buckle on the sauna belt because there's so many saunas here. A few years ago, Jim purchased this original Finnish sauna and moved it from our hometown of Bruce Crossing to Painesdale. This sauna was covered in a siding for many years, so when one of the owners removed the siding, the, the logs were in pretty good shape. But there were some alterations made to it, and uh, my goal was to take it back to the original. I believe that this sauna uh, was built in the 1930s, and it's built in uh, traditional Finnish style. In this case, it's a double dovetail corner. Uh, the thing about the dovetail corners uh, is that when you build this, the building and the logs still are somewhat green, as they dry, it tightens. And so the building becomes tighter over time. When the sauna came here, there were some things that had to be added. And so I was happy that I had uh, been somewhat of a pack rat. So I have the uh, pick from my grandfather's uh, farm. And we think that he used this when he was even mining in the, in the copper mines in Calumet. And then a lot of the things that are in the sauna are things that have come from the family, like my grandparents' wood box, even the light fixture. Uh, this was very often a typical light fixture in a, in a sauna. Here in the copper country, it was a mason jar. You have this small window between the two rooms so that you know, the light that's from there provides light for both spaces. So this is the steam room of the sauna. And here's the Nippa sauna stove that I, I so happily own. One thing that I really uh, cherish about this sauna is I have a Leo Nippa sauna stove. He was from my hometown and he was one of the earliest developers of a sauna stove industry. He started making those stoves in, in part by uh, recycling old smokestacks from the mines throughout the Copper Country. I think it was in the early 30s that he began doing this. And my understanding of the, the stove that I have, which is from my grandparents' sauna, was one of his early stoves. Quite typical for uh, these Finnish American saunas, the chimney would start from here. And I don't really know why that was, except I assume that part of it was uh, Finnish frugality that you had to buy the bricks, but everything else you could make. So they would only start the bricks from where they needed them. The other thing that's important about traditional sauna is that you, when you're sitting in the sauna, your feet shouldn't be any lower than the top of the sauna stove. And that's why the benches were always high. Finland, uh, when you have a sauna switch, it's made out of birch boughs. In this case, this is birch that I harvested uh, early last summer. And you, uh, you have to do it before midsummer. You have to do it before the leaves are fully developed. And then you hang them in a cool 
dry place. And then when you take these out, you soak them and it's a very nice smell. And it's a very, uh, you know, it's supposed to be beneficial to make you, you sweat and to bring your circulation. You switch yourself or the person next to you with these. In the United States, here in the, in the UP anyway, very often they use cedar. And uh, cedar also has a nice smell, but uh, in Finland they don't have cedar. And so they would put this, you know, and you'd get it wet and then you'd even set it on the stove just briefly and it brings a very nice smell. And there's a lot of curative or healing powers in uh, birch. So this is very traditional sauna that we don't have a shower. We do it the old fashioned way, the way I did it as a kid where you have pans of water and you, after you've taken your steam, you fill the water and you bathe that way. For this sauna, uh, we enjoy it to be about 180 to about 200. It's a large steam room, so that temperature is quite comfortable. I think it's a preferential thing as far as how much heat or how hot you take it, how long you take the steam. A lot of it has to do with what you can stand. Finnish men who want to show their sisu or their stamina, you know, they try to outdo one another uh, sitting on the top bench and take as much steam as possible. I joined a sauna group on Facebook and someone there mentioned the whole sauna experience can take up to two hours. Seems like a long time, but when you go in and you, you bathe and then you take a rest and maybe you have some refreshments, maybe a snack and you go back in and take some more steam and then take another rest and then go back, it could easily be two hours and have a lot of conversation. So if you're doing a, a good proper sauna, two hours is nothing, especially if there's a lake nearby.